part of the cohesion project as well. So thanks very much for the uh, the invitation. So just to, uh, I suppose from my perspective, what I'd like to do is just share a little bit about how clustering has developed in, in Ireland, you know, the origins of that, the context within these cluster organizations or networks um, had, had to get going, um, the approaches that were taken then, I suppose a, a bottom-up approach to, to clustering, what the current sort of funding landscape and situation looks like, and, and potentially, I suppose, the opportunities for the future. So to start, I suppose we could start at the start and, and where where clustering sort of came about in, in Ireland. And one thing I probably forgot to put in the, the presentation is the the role Michael Porter had, I suppose, in, in terms of um, clustering and then the clustering sort of terminology and, and what's meant by that and how other nations then, I suppose, gravitated towards that in terms of um, of looking at their competitiveness. So in 1980, Michael Porter released a text, Competitive Strategy, and that text, uh, I suppose, started introducing clustering networking and, and companies innovating together. He followed that up in 1990 with his book, The Competitive Advantage of Nations, in which he proposed a sort of five-step diamond where companies would be connected um, to their their national sort of natural resources or, or the factor conditions. They'd be driven by demanding customers. Uh, they'd be related in supporting industries that would be connected um, to that particular sector. And then the rivalry and the innovation and the structure of that particular sector would all lead to, to what we call sort of clustering um, today. He also sort of identified that, that government and chance factors are things that just happen out of the blue can also lead to, to huge benefits for, um, for, for clusters as, as they develop. So Ireland then, I suppose around the 1990 point, started looking at, uh, at clusters a little bit more and, and looking at when it was becoming the, the sort of hot topic internationally and looking at how that could impact Irish industrial policy. So the Culloden Report was written in 1992 and that really looked at reforming, I suppose, how Irish industrial development would become more conducive to, uh, to supporting sort of innovation and, uh, and collaboration between companies. So one, one of the things I suppose that, um, that the Department of Enterprise, Trade and Employment was, was looking at was how particular segments or clusters could be established to develop more of a sort of national competitive advantage within Ireland. So they took to putting together a, a number of different reports under the National Economic and Social Council, and, and they they produced a number of different reports on clustering, I suppose, within Ireland and the appetite for clustering and potentially what could happen there over a number of years within the, the 1990s. So the strategy for competitive growth, growth and employment looked at highlighting the benefits of clusters and advocated, I suppose, to bring those sort of smaller indigenous firms together and allow them to scale and sort of connect with, with large firms. The next report in 1996 looked at networking for competitive advantage. So this one looked broadly more outside at, at the rest of Europe and how maybe clusters were developing in, in the likes of Catalonia, Austria, Italy, who'd implemented sort of clustering programs within their, uh, their regional development policies. But in 1997, they ended up recommending against uh, indigenous industrial development of a, a, you know, on a on a national cluster policy, because they didn't really feel, I suppose, that we had um, the type of type or breadth of companies that would be needed to to sort of develop that sort of industry cluster model to the scale that Porter was discussing. So in terms of the next steps. Um, I suppose after those NESC reports uh, came out and, and after the support was sort of looked for, um, maybe a different track was taken on, on sort of networking and whatnot. But in all of the multi-annual sort of strategies and statements, clustering was really sort of missing. It, it went missing for the end of the 90s and up to the start of the noughties. You know, it, it wasn't really mentioned in in national reports, uh, and it wasn't really mentioned in terms of our sort of national enterprise strategies. 
So Prontius Pernock actually believed that clusters only occupy a very marginal place in the overall thrust of Irish economic and industrial development policy. So in, in terms of once the noughties started and uh, and we'd moved through that sort of period of maybe clusters don't uh, don't seem to be something that's that's important from from Ireland's economic development perspective. In, in 2008, uh, I suppose the tune was changed, and there was a number of different clusters that were described in Ireland in the Department of Enterprise, Enterprise Trade and Employment report in 2008, which showcased a biopharma cluster internationally traded services cluster and ICT clusters across across Ireland based I suppose predominantly around Cork, Galway and Dublin uh, would be where the hubs of, of that sort of activity uh, were taking place but however to date there's no specific cluster policy developed at, at a national level and if we look under the hood a little bit more and, and you sort of Google clusters in Ireland um, I suppose the, in, in the face of COVID-19 um, there's more clusters of COVID-19 in Ireland than there are articles published on Google when you uh, when you search for that um, uh, on the search engine. Whereas if you look at France or Denmark, um, the majority of what comes up is based upon their their national clustering development programs. So you have Cluster Excellence Denmark and, and you have the French uh, national clustering elements. But you you do see little bits of COVID, but not uh, not to the same extent as when you uh, when you actually um, Google clusters in Ireland. So in in terms of the context for clustering in Ireland, then now I, I suppose at, at the point that we've reached at, at this at this stage, and in all the latest sort of um, policy documents that have come after 2010, uh, clustering is mentioned in in all of them. So. Uh, Karen was mentioning earlier, I suppose, the research prioritization exercise and, and how that is um, Ireland's RIS3 strategy. So it's, it's heavily mentioned in that, heavily mentioned in our action plan for jobs uh, policies, in the national development plan, in the local economic and community plans. I, I have the Cork, um, the Cork County plan there, but, but it's mentioned in, in numerous others across the country, the action plan for jobs 2018. And, and more recently, as, as you've heard this morning, I suppose, in the recess, uh, the regional enterprise strategies and, and the national planning framework as well. So it's integrated everywhere within our um, within our policy reports and, and action plans. So in terms of attracting finance to, to the country and, and in terms of, I suppose, developing indigenous industry, there's lots of talk from our development agencies, IDA and Enterprise Ireland, about world-class clusters and, and global leadership in uh, in key sectors and, and key sort of global sectors, all of which based in Ireland. Uh, just to, to give that sort of context then on the development agencies, so IDA Ireland, for those of us who are, who are joining from outside of Ireland, so IDA Ireland are a national enterprise agency that supports uh, the development of foreign enterprise in Ireland. So they work on a one-to-one -one basis with companies, uh, look at areas like capital and employment investment, R&D and innovation grants, tax credits, and the business asset grant to attract companies into Ireland um, to, to set up their operations here. And they've been hugely successful at, at bringing large uh, multinational industry in, into the country. Enterprise Ireland then is the sister organization that deals with all indigenous enterprise within Ireland. So they work on a one-to-one -one basis with companies in terms of supporting them with innovation vouchers, connecting them in terms of research commercialization with the universities and, and IOTs, innovation partnership programs, and, and technology gateways where companies can connect to, uh, to these technology centers based all, all across the country to, to support their sort of research and innovation agenda. But up until a couple of years ago, they weren't really bringing companies together from a collaborative perspective and and I suppose developing that sort of co-creation, co-innovation uh, that, that we see happening in, in regions all across Europe. So this led to a situation where some organizations have sought to develop um, clusters on their own, outside or independent of national policy in the first instance. So you have organizations like Energy Cork, IT Cork, uh, 
Geoscience Ireland, the Emerald Aero Cluster, Kerry SciTech that would have been started as initiatives, um, you know, through the support of, of local development agencies or private industry in, in certain cases to build and develop a network and, and transform that network then in towards, I suppose, the, the type of clustering initiative that, uh, that Porter was mentioning or that we see a lot of uh, across Europe. So this, I suppose, from a policy perspective, things are starting to change and evolve. Um, I won't steal Owen Burns' thunder, who, who's going to present later, but the Cyber Ireland model was something that was pitched by, by CIT and our research group here in, in, in the Cork Institute of Technology, VLINK. Um, I suppose we pitched the idea of developing a, a cluster organization, a European-style cluster organization, to IDA Ireland to connect the, the large sort of foreign multinational cyber sector that's on the, on the island at present with the growing indigenous sector that's, uh, uh, you know, that's rooted here in, in the country. So Owen will tell you more about that and, and I'll, I'll leave that at that point. But Enterprise Ireland then have started to look at, I suppose, a clustering development model where where they can start to connect more of the indiv indigenous companies, uh, you know, in, in key sort of clusters across the country. So they launched uh, a regional enterprise development fund. Um, they launched it with 2.65 million um, in, in early 2019. Um, funding was announced in, in December 2019 of 4.6 million. So they actually supported more, um, more clusters than, than they originally had budget for. Um, but but that sort of project is is gaining traction now, and those those clusters that were funded in December 2019, they're starting to sort of emerge, and and the funding is starting to be implemented now at this point. So in in terms of the clusters that are in the southern region, you have Cyber Ireland, Energy Cork, IT Cork, and, and Kerry SciTech would be the ones that 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 I'd be most aware of. You have developing clusters then um, through the RTCF, um, through Limerick Institute of Technology and, and Tralee Institute of Technology. But I, I suppose we still have difficulties and, and we still have problems because even with these particular programs, there's no national definition of a cluster or there's no definition of, of what a cluster organization is and, and what that type of organization does. So this kind of this disjointed approach, and this leads to the sort of difficulties that have been outlined throughout this presentation, and and there's a real lack of of clarity, I suppose, in terms of what is a cluster and what isn't a cluster. Even at this point, when we're you know we're we're pumping um, government funding in into these networks and and clusters, you know, we don't really have a set of rules and, and criteria that are published and nationally agreed on as as of yet. So the ideal situation would be that we have this national policy. I think that's being called for in the RESIS and, and a number of different other action plans that have been developed, maybe more at a regional level. And now is the time, I suppose, to, to join the dots and, and have that, uh, that clarity around a national uh, funding policy so that over the longer term, we'd have this, this national stance on, on what a cluster is, and, and what type of sort of relationship there will be with, with national funding agencies um, over the long-term period, like we see in, in regions like Catalonia, in regions in Austria, where they have a, they've built and developed a, a long-term sustainable cluster program where there's, they're reaping huge rewards in, in terms of the innovation from those. So the, there's four real priority areas for cluster development, and these relate to enhancing research development and innovation, facilitating internationalization and business growth, supporting skills development, education and training, and mapping promotion and networking for the, the companies that are involved in those. And, and we see, I suppose, a role for each of those particular areas uh, being developed by those cluster organizations to bring real actionable benefits back to their members. And I suppose the time is right now at present um, as, as smart specialization is evolving and as clusters are being seen across Europe to be a key um, pillar within smart specialization strategies and how government and policymakers connect well with industry, 
I think now is the, the right time to be calling for that sort of clarity and looking at the development of, of that national cluster policy. So I think that's all for me. So I'd like to uh, thanks uh, again for being invited to, to sort of set the stage. And I hope that um, that Owen Byrne will be able to uh, to showcase the development of um, of Cyber Ireland and, and how that sort of come out of, of this particular situation.